Hello everyone, so welcome to Research Hub. In this lecture, I'm going to show you the PLS predict application in Smart PLS software. So here is the basic model that we have been testing so far. We have the live satisfaction affected by customer satisfaction. Then customer satisfaction is affected by bus tangible features, per driver's quality, empathy of the bus service drivers. And then we have the environmental performance also affecting customer satisfaction. And you see the indicators of the latent variables. All of the latent variables are measured using uh, four to five indicators or items right so now what we are going to do is we are going to check the predictive performance of this model okay so to do that it's actually very easy we just go to calculate and then we go here on pls predict and that's mainly all okay so here we click on path and on the setup we have these 10 folds and 10 repetitions. So now before we go to this PLS predict, it's important to understand two concepts. The concept of sample, training and test sample, and the concept of cross-validation. So I'm going to briefly explain this to you. And you also see that there are some explanations here, right? So now let's see if I turn on my paint. So now, Let's say we have two of 200 observations, right? We have, let's say, uh, if I draw this line, let's say if this line indicates the number of observations. So here we have zero, and then here we have 200, okay? So in forecasting literature, normally what we need is we need something called training and test sample, okay? So normally in time series data, you will have, let's say, 80% of the observation as your training sample and the last 20% of the observation as your test sample. Okay, so let's say it would be like something like uh, up to 160 here, you would take it as a training sample. Okay, this part of the data, okay, number of observation, it would be your training. And then this part of the observations will be your test sample. So what you will do is you will estimate your model parameters based on the training model and then using the estimated parameters you will apply and estimate the predicted values of the test sample and then you will see how accurate was your predicted values. So here we are dealing with mainly three concepts that is dividing of sample and then Actually, also, you have to do the forecast accuracy. And to do the forecast better, we also come up with this concept of cross-validation. Okay, so mainly three concepts. Sample dividing, okay, sample, uh, yeah, dividing. And then we have the accuracy, okay, forecast accuracy. And then we have the third concept is cross-validation. So cross-validation and sample, they are very highly related and we run the accuracy on the cross-validated samples, uh, okay? So now, in this case, what we're dealing with is actually not really a time series data, okay? So that's okay. It's not a time series data. And here we can still do cross-validation, okay? So what are we going to do? So let's say here we have 10 folds, right? So here we have 200 observation. What we are going to do is, let's say, if I draw, let's say, yeah, if, if I draw three of them, okay? Here, here by these three lines, I am actually indicating three folds, okay? Fold one, fold two, for three, uh, if I give you an example with three folds, I believe you will understand how the 10 fold works, right? So here, let's say we are going to use this part of the data, okay? This part of the data as our training sample and only the last 20 observations, okay? Last 20 observation as our test sample, okay? And because it's a cross-validation sample, it doesn't matter if we have a 
if we follow a sequence of the data or if we don't follow a sequence of the data. If it was time series modeling, then we have to follow the sequence of time in our cross validation. So the cross validation approach in time series is a bit slightly different than what we're going through here. In the second fold, we are again going to, let's say, keep this 20 observations, okay? 10%, we are following a 10% rule. So this is going to be our test and the rest of it is going to be our training. Let's say here we are going to have another 20 observations, which is going to be our test and the rest is going to be our training data, training observation, okay? So this is the test part here. So likewise, what we are going to do if we follow, let's say 90-10 rule, then we are going to keep 20 observations from different parts of the sample every time and use the rest 180 observations to predict those 20 test sample observations, okay? So similarly, we will have these 10 folds, okay? So let's say if I create another one, uh, let's say now here we have the test sample here and this could be our training sample, okay? So the idea of cross validation is that, you know, it might happen that in some parts of the data, the data is a bit different. There are maybe outliers or things like that. And maybe the forecast would be really good. The accuracy of the forecast maybe is really good when we are predicting this test sample, but maybe not so good when we are predicting this test sample, okay? Maybe it is so good here, but maybe not so good here. So when we do a number of this cross validation on different training and samples, training samples and test sample within the same data set, that is when, and in the end, when, when we aggregate the forecast accuracy of these 10 folds or five folds, whatever we do, then we, if we aggregate and look into the aggregated forecast accuracy, then we will have a better estimate of the predictive accuracy of the whole uh, of the of the predicted accuracy of the estimated model right so that's the main idea here so i have already discussed with you the sampling i have already discussed with cross validation right and in accuracy we are going to talk about that when we come to the forecast performance part okay so now i'm going to clean it and I'm just going to click here on run and here for number of repetition it simply indicates the number of repetition indicate how often PLS algorithm runs the k false validation on the sample split uh, on the random split of the full sample into k false so normally it's good to have the same number in both cases okay so we just go start and we will get the results and if I click here on report this is the result I get so here mainly you get this PLS result and LM result, okay? Linear model and the PLS sum model. So here the main idea is that we compare the linear model forecast accuracy, these are forecast accuracy measures with the PLS sum forecast accuracy measures. And if our PLS sum accuracy measures are better than the linear uh, model accuracy measures, that means our model is better. Our model is validated or it has higher predictive accuracy, okay? So in the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to do predict the endogenous variables. So for forecast accuracy performance are better, that would mean that our PLS model is performing better in terms of predictive accuracy. So now here, what we see is that we have three majors, four majors, RMEC, MAE, MAP, and PLS predict. Here for these three, the lower the better. Okay, but for P Q squared predict, it is similar to the R square value we normally use in a, in a linear regression, right? So normally it is higher is better. Okay, here higher is better. So here, what we're basically doing is we are having a linear model structure and we are having a PLS predict, PLS model structure. So in the linear model structure, you see we are predicting the items of our two endogenous variables, okay? We are predicting all the items, the three items of customer satisfaction and the five, five items of the life satisfaction. We are predicting all of them considering all the other items as independent variables, okay? And then in the PLS model, we are considering the overall structure of the PLS model and then estimating the item score of our 
two endogenous variable the customer satisfaction and the life satisfaction and then we are going to see if the RMAC of this prediction is better and for this prediction we use tenfold which I already explained so for example here if we look into the RMAC you see that the RMAC values are lower in PLS compared to what we have in the linear model so that indicates that PLS model is actually better Similarly, the MA value is also lower in LM in our PLS model compared to our MAE model. For MAP also, you see here we have like 30, 20, 24, 25, and here we have 28, 23, 24. So it's a bit lower compared to the LM model. So that also means that our PLS model is doing good. For Q square, which is similar to uh, the R square, and we would normally expect it to be higher. Here you see that it's actually higher in the PLS model. That means the PLS model that we have estimated, uh, the structural model, it has higher predictive power. So that's the good one, okay? So in PLSM, sometimes this PLS predict is reported in journal articles as a model fit, okay? So to demonstrate that the PLS model is doing good and it, ha it, it is a valid model. So sometimes we report it as well. And here, if you want to know a little bit about these equations here, so I can briefly write them here. So for RMSE, what we are actually doing, it means root mean squared error. So here we have the root, and here we will need the actual values of the real data, okay? Minus the predicted values. predicted values and we are going to square that and we are going to take the mean of it okay and then we take the root of it so that's kind of the equation uh, for the root mean squared error okay then for MAE here what we have is mean absolute error so that's really simple we have the we have to take the actual absolute value actual minus the predicted actual minus the predicted, okay? And by this symbol, I'm indicating absolute value. We take the absolute value of it, and we just take the average of all the uh, predictions, okay? Then we have the MAPE, mean absolute percentage error. So it's also very simple here. What we have is, again, we take the absolute value of uh, actual values minus the predicted values. Okay, and here the difference is that we have to first divide it by the actual value. For each of the observation, when we deduct the predicted value from the actual value, then we also have to divide it by the actual value to get the percentage. Okay, and then in the end, we take the mean of all of it. Okay, and for Q square, uh, the equation is a slightly different, which is one minus SSE divided by SSO. So here, this SSE means sum of squared errors. Okay. So all the errors we will get, we will square it and then we will take the sum of it. And here, SSO means sum of squared observation. Right. So these are the main four equations. Okay. And I will also provide some links below in the video description so you will find more detail about each of these majors. So now I believe you will be able to uh, estimate a PLSM model and PLS predict model and report the results in your journal article. Thank you for listening.